Hi there, I'm Ashley, and this is my friend Ben. Hi. And we are from ABV Technology, and today we are at Arbiter Brewing in Minneapolis. Gorgeous. Uh, we are drinking their non-alcoholic India Pale Lager, mm. and it is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Cheers. Cheers. The last time that we all kind of got together, we gave you an overview of some of the different uh, details and points of non-alcoholic beers and production. And so today, what we kind of wanted to fine tune was the different methods to creating a very fantastic non-alcoholic beer like this. Exactly, we'll talk about all the different ways you can make non-alcoholic beer and some of the choices, the benefits and the detractors of each. Uh, and try to help you to figure out what's the right way for your craft brewery to make a non-alcoholic beer. So what, uh, what different methods are there in any beer production? Sure, so there's primarily three different ways that you can make NA beer. And I'll start off with the most traditional method. Um, this was sort of the way that NA beer has been made for literally hundreds of years, mostly in the German tradition, and something called halted fermentation. Hmm. And halted fermentation basically works by taking a beer and brewing up that beer, but only letting it ferment to a really low ABV. And the result of that is that you can easily use your existing equipment, you can use your existing recipes, but you end up with a beer that tastes a little bit too sweet and a little too malty often. And it can take a lot of time to really refine the recipe to make a truly good halted fermentation NA beer. Uh, Is that because yeah. fermenting wort creates and produces flavors and aromas? Mm. Yeah, I would say that. You know, I think I'm a strong believer, and I think I share this with a lot of people, that truly good beer comes from fermentation. Yeah. It's like a lot of different things, right? You know, it's, it's hard to imagine having pickles that weren't fermented or yogurt that wasn't fermented, so. I love pickles. Right, and yogurt together. Pickle beer, <laughs> pickle NA beer, sign me up. <laughs> so if you're going to, uh, if you're going to go the fermented beer route, which is what we recommend, um, you can produce any kind of beer you want to any recipe you want and you ferment it up to its full strength. Let's take, for example, a nice 5% lager. You ferment that up and you treat it just like you would any other recipe. And then the question you have to ask yourself next is, how do I want to remove the alcohol from that beer? Depending on how many different varieties of NA beer you have, how many different recipes you're gonna support, and the styled choice itself, that's going to help you decide which method you want to use for what we call dealkalization. So is what you are explaining a form of distillation? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, distillation is both a chemical term and a legal term. Um, it refers to the sort of separation of a component of a mixture and sort of necessarily concentrates or increases the concentration of that mixture. Okay. Um, if you're using a process where you are removing the alcohol and the concentration increases, both chemically and legally, that is distillation. Most of the dealkalization methods that we're gonna talk about today don't do that. Okay. They output a, they produce a non-alcoholic beverage and output a side product that isn't a concentrated byproduct. So any brewery can use these methods. Most of the methods we're going to talk about and you know, like it, are, are able to be used by any brewery without any special licensure. Yeah, that's correct. That's, that's awesome. correct. That's correct. So um, with regard to the methods, uh, there's really two different ways that you can separate alcohol out of a fermented beer. Um, and this applies to wine or cider or other things as well. But those two methods are something called a membrane process or a membrane method and then an evaporative method. In a membrane method, you're using a, uh, a special membrane that has very small holes in it, pores in it, and might be chemically treated in order to optimize the separation of alcohol from that beer. Interesting. Um, those membrane systems uh, are typically able to take in that fully fermented, NA, or fully fermented beer, separate out the alcohol efficiently, and give you back a non-alcoholic beer uh, using that approach. 
They are efficient. They operate at low temperatures. It's nice. Uh, they have some side. Uh, they have some detractors, which are that they often require the membranes to be changed out quite often. They have a um, a lifetime that has. They will wear out after a certain amount of time. Uh, and tuning that membrane process for a specific recipe can take a little bit of work. Okay. So it's not quite as plug and play as some of the evaporative methods. Okay. The evaporative methods work, and, and there's a wide variety of different machines here in this class, but the evaporative methods work by separating out a beer by its boiling point. So mm -hmm. if you think of a beer as a whole bunch of different chemicals organized by their boiling points, an evaporative method separates out the aromatic fraction of the beer, pulls that aside, pulls out the ethanol, puts that aside, and then puts the aromatics back with the remainder of the beer by just sort of removing the ethanol gently. Sounds like magic. <laughs> it's not exactly magic, but I've heard that before. Uh, we, um, th those methods can be done also at low temperatures. Uh, and can be done in a way that doesn't really affect the flavor of the beer. I mean, this literally tastes like it would taste with ethanol in it and alcohol. It's crazy. Sure, yeah, the folks at Artbiter here have done a really amazing job with this NAIPL. Um, you know, we've worked with them for a while and uh, the brewer who's running around behind us here actually doing the work is really the person who deserves the credit for yeah. the taste here. Um, the the, the real advantage to evaporative methods, in my view, is that you're able to really support the wide variety of styles that the craft brewing industry wants. Yeah. You're not stuck with only golden lagers that have been centrifuged and filtered and processed. Those are all tools that only really a lot of larger breweries can actually afford. So when we're talking about investments to make NA, having the ability to run a hazy IPA or a porter or a triple or a lager and use the exact same process and clean it using standard CIP methods. That's huge. Those are huge benefits for the craft brewing industry. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to see um, out in the market how the NA brands, especially in our area, have really kind of spanned the whole range of styles, which yeah, is right. super unique because I feel like in the past, you're stuck to a lager or golden ale or something that is kind of light bodied and not a lot of flavor. Yes. Where, you know, I tried a beer here at Arbiter last winter that was a chai vanilla stout NA that just blew my mind. Yeah, that's right. And that's, that really speaks to that variety of styles that can be used through evaporative methods. Very cool. You know, at ABV, we've um, built a machine that is a hybrid of both the membrane and um, evaporative methods. The evaporative method is used to process the beer and do that separation by boiling points that I mentioned. And then membranes are used to clean up the water and make sure that only low dissolved oxygen water is used as part of the process. So we try to use the best of both worlds in those technologies, but um, we've focused the core of the beer separation and NA, pro uh, NA beer making around those evaporative methods for those reasons. Very cool. Yeah. Yep. And it's resulted in, as you say, such a huge wide variety of beers. It's amazing. Yeah. All of these beers have been stellar. Now, once you've made a decision about how to make a non-alcoholic beer, whether it be that halted fermentation approach, the membrane approach, an evaporative approach, or some hybrid, uh, you're not quite done yet. Um, you probably can produce a great NA beer right out of the gate with existing recipes that you already have. But often, the next step to really sort of take it to the next level is to, for the brewer to then think about what they tasted coming out of that machine that first time that you got the beer out. For example, you know, when Arbiter came to us and said, we want to make this NA IPL, they used their standard IPL recipe. We created a demo for them and they tasted it and said, you know what, this is great, but we're going to make a couple tweaks to really help improve that final flavor. The removal of ethanol while it um, you know, we were removing ethanol to make a non-alcoholic beer. It can have some changes to the way the beer profile and the flavor taste. Okay. So having the brewer then come back and say, all right, I'm going to add a little bit more oats back in to increase the body. 
Okay. I'm going to brew to a specific, a little bit higher gravity in order to improve that mouthfeel a little bit. Those are all little tricks and tweaks that can really help to rebalance that non-alcoholic beer, even though it's already great coming out from their original recipe. That is kind of nice that you can have pre and post production options to enhance the flavor profiles or create something that you know blows people away and is an NA. Yeah, and I mean, I, you saw at the beginning of the video here that the head on this beer was just amazing, and that's that's a real testament to the hard work that the folks here have done to really improve and improve with each iteration. Um, and this is sold extremely well for them. So cool. Yeah. So much excitement in the world of the NA. It truly is. Yes, exactly. <laughs>